Morning guys, I'm Captain Lee. That's Senior Chief Travis. How's it going everybody? Good morning. And we're walking on water. <laughs> I'll explain, stick around. We'll roll in here and see if there's anything shallow real quick and then we'll come back out and work that outside line. I think we should go that way first. Yeah, it looks pretty good out there. Yeah, I just want to check shallow real quick because I see some bait moving down in the in where these these pads open up. Wayo yap kapka. Yeah, don't ask me to spell it. For my fellow redneck brothers, that is walking water. Oh, I thought I had a bite. I got a really bad bite. Travis won the September Veterans free guide trip giveaway and he chose Lake Walking Water. He and a buddy down, we came down here in the early 2000s and won a tournament with 21-ish pounds. Travis tells me that they would have had 26 Six. pounds <laughs> if his buddy could actually learn to set the hook. Travis, right there. Just turn. I you got it. something that you can get in there with? Not really, but I'll throw this in there. Here, throw this, Adam. Anything on the deck you can throw. Gonna need a little thumb pressure on it. Travis, where were we? Oh, Travis tells me they'd had 26 pounds if his buddy could set the hook on the eight pounder they lost at the side of the boat. But uh, but anyway, we're on walking water. We're gonna be here for from eight to probably two o'clock. Um, Travis has got to drive back to North Florida tonight, so that's why we're gonna shut it down at two. We're on the backside of the full moon, which typically puts the bite better in the afternoons, and that's the way it's been the last few days on Kissimmee. But we've also got a cold front coming in, so the rain and the nasties are supposed to be here about two o'clock, so hopefully, between the wind blowing out of the east and the cold front coming and getting closer to the afternoon, we should pick up a big bite, so stick around. Um, I did that for a while. My first duty station whenever I switched over, and then, um, I got container inspector qualified. So we basically check um, any type of containers coming in and out of ports for undeclared hazmat. Uh, yeah, so after that, uh, I started, sh I shifted, my career shifted over to inspecting vessels. So I did foreign container ships. Um, at that point, I was down in uh, in Miami. So that was a cool port to work in because we would do, I got container ship qualified and then I, I moved over to bulk ships, did some bulk ships and then cruise ships. So oh really? So work. you were doing for Coast Guard certification? Yep. Yeah, so anytime they got their COC on a cruise ship, we'd go out there and look at them. So is that only for Vessels that were flagged under the U.S. To call, that or any any in U.S. waters could you could you yep. speak? anything that came in U.S. A lot of them were foreign flagged. Okay, um, but if they come in U.S. port, it's fair game for us to go on on board, and make sure that they're uh, in compliance with the regulations. So did you get tipped off? You was there a hotline where you got tips where there's something going on? Do you need to go check, or you just kind of randomly did? No, it was just random or scheduled. You know, if they're coming up on an annual or they need to redo a redo their cert, we just go out there and do it. So do they have to have like a certification yep. just to be coming to a U.S. port? Yep. Uh, okay, so you had a list of who was coming. Yeah. Much. Okay. Yeah, what, yeah, we knew who all the crew members were, so we we inspect it from personnel. So we go on board and check their, their personal certification, you know, their STCW, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure they're qualified, radio qualified. We buy every certificate that, it, that they have on that boat. <laughs> Pretty much from stem to stern, we, we look, inspect it and poke at it and make sure it's right. <laughs> well, that's cool because you, I mean, you were always, it's not like you were inspecting the same ship over and over. You got to see something different. Right. Pretty much every day. Yep. Who? a bump. That was a very aggressive buggy whip bite, I think. Yeah. Yeah, with this, with a super sensitive rod and 9X braid and I get, and not having a bite yet. I was getting a little jumpy. So. <laughs> So you were, where were you? You were down in Miami? Yeah, this? that was in Miami. And then after that, I went up to, um, I was up in New York and Long Island. Ooh, I heard something pop back there. And up there, I did a little bit more domestic vessels, a lot of commercial fishing vessels, um, ferry boats. And then also I managed six or seven people that did all the pollution response for all of Long Island. Oh, really? Yeah, I was kind of like the immediate supervisor underneath our 
our unit supervisor. I'm not very familiar with Coast Guard ranking, so where's a senior chief fit in? It, that's like, you're getting pretty close to the top of enlisted at that point, aren't you? Yep, yeah, so we go off the same ranks as the Navy, so I was a uh, E-8, okay. retired as E-8. Uh, the, only, the only level up above that would be a Master Chief. I heard that one pop. Yeah, they bit something in here popping. We're gonna stick around and maybe forget where we can pitch in there a little deeper, because it's about, if my hearing is not failing me, which is, you know, that is a possibility, about 10 or 15 yards back in there. Yeah, it seems like it's right on that hard edge. Yeah, where the, sp the sparse stuff stops and it gets pretty solid, I think that's where it's coming from. We'll see if we can get in there and pitch a little further back. You got enough rod and, uh, and line to get them out of there if you need to. <clears throat> so 22 years in the Coast Guard. Now what's up for life after the Coast Guard? Yeah, so as I was heading out of the Coast Guard um, in 2016, I realized that I'm gonna give my GI Bill, my post 9-11 GI Bill to my, my two oldest. Um, there's one that's popped in there. Oh, I see it. Um, so there was, I had the opportunity to um, go to online college, so I went to Columbia Southern University, got my degree in occupational safety and health. Okay. So hopefully I'll land a job, you know, doing safety, uh, occupational safety and health for a company on the civilian side. I heard another one pop way back up in there. Yeah, hopefully it'll move out here a little bit. I have not seen any bait out here on the edge, because they are deep in these buggy whips. Something's deep in these buggy whips. Yeah. Maybe we sneak around the edge here and get a little shallower or my water we might be able to Ooh, Ooh. see that one? Ooh. Can you flip in there? Yeah. I saw that one bump. I hope I got the beginning of that because I was too busy listening and paying attention to what you were saying. I, I forgot I was the camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in there. Something bumping around in there still. And it could be a tilapia, but I don't think so. Not the right time of year for that. Uh, maybe a turtle's in there bumping around. Could be, but I, that, I think what we saw was a bass. It yeah. hit it pretty hard. Because typically turtles would just rub around them. Ooh, there's a nice little pad field here. Hiding around a corner is a beautiful pad field. Well, let's go check it out. There's one boil right there to the right of your, where you're at. See it? Oh, I saw that. Kind of looked like a shad got stuck on a pad or something. We got eelgrass up here. Getting pretty shallow though. Oh, there's a bite. I think it was a gar. No, nope. nope, he's in there. Nope, flying fish. <laughs> the old flying fish, but here's the thing. That's one and the skunk is out. That's right. I did not expect to get bit this early, to be quite honest with you. I was just gonna keep you busy talking about stuff until the bite turned on at like 10.30, but we'll take him. We'll take a little guy. Um, I believe he is, no, he's just a hair longer than the Pippinator, Pippinator. so <laughs> he counts. <laughs> One. Ooh, man, there's some fish. Look at that. Ooh. They're starting to get active. I'm hoping this front coming is really gonna turn them on. See if they'll hit this moving. We just gotta find them. There's a couple little fish in there moving around. All right, let's go see what's going on out here, these isolated buggy whips. All right. That chatterbait going. Top water. That's just what I was about to pick up, the old chatterbait. The wind switched around to the north a little bit. Yeah, that we are right on the edge of that front. We got clear blue skies to the southeast of us, and we got those dark clouds to the northwest of us. Hopefully, I'll turn these fish on before it starts raining. Stick around, guys. Yeah. Oh, there's a bite. Nice. And we found a concentration of them out here offshore. No, that's the brush pile. Thought I had a bite. There's some stuff down there on the bottom coming up now. Yeah, it's it's down. It's we're really right on top of it. Yeah, I, I see, see some, some fish off the brush pile. Looks like bait though. Is the down end is a down imaging transducer back here? Yeah, there's one back there, and I've got one up here too. Okay. Yeah. But what you're looking at is down imaging back there. Yeah, we just went right over something, right behind the boat. Let's try one back there. There's one. Oh, I missed him. Oh. 
What'd you get him on? A uh, little football jig. Oh. Little wobble head. Strike one. Strike one. All right, this is where we should be fishing drop shots, but I just don't have it in me. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I can't fish it. I don't fish a spinner bait either. And it's a great bait. I'll throw a chatter bait, but for some reason, I think it was when I first started, I think my problem came from when I first started fishing Kissimmee. And I was actually in that, exactly where we're talking about in Gator Cove, mm -hmm. because I was in a 17 foot aluminum Triton, so I didn't venture too far away because you get beat up pretty bad in a flat bottom boat. Oh yeah. And I was throwing a spinner bait and I was just catching mudfish after mudfish and they were tearing up the spinner baits. And I was like, this is no fun. So I stopped. <laughs> and I think that was the last time I seriously fished a spinner bait in Kissimmee. I'm coming through some good brush now. There's some good stuff underneath us. I don't get bit this cast. I think I'm gonna go to a ribbon tail and see what it does. Oh. Got heavy. Oh, there it goes. Nice. Oh, I think he might. Right there. I got a brush pop. <laughs> I had a fish. Now I got a brush pile. Strike two. I think it was a pretty big fish too, because it, it was heavy, and then it ran right into the brush pile. Yeah. It was a smart fish. <laughs> oh, I see why too. There's a bunch of stuff over here. Because the boat wasn't moving, and that was the line being, that was a bait. Man, there's a lot of stuff right here. Oh, you know what? We're going to see what the brush pile looks like. Is this coming off the bottom? Oh, it's this is a natural brush pile. It's a stick. I got a good stick with a buoy on it. Man, that's a solid hook set. Look at look at that solid hook set into that stick. <laughs> you should be proud of that one. That one penetrated to the barb. Yes, sir. You gonna set the hook? That's the way you set it. I'm good while you rig up. I can think I can hit. I'm just fan casting the whole area back there where that stuff was at and I got bit. Yeah, we're kind of, we're sitting kind of on the other side, but we might want to go back to exactly where we were because sometimes the angle matters. But you would think if anything, they'd be nose facing that way. That yeah. way. So maybe sitting here, casting into the wind, I don't know. Every time I think of something like that, it's like, ugh. I could be right, I could be wrong, I don't know. That sounded like spinnerbait. Yeah. I got a big one on there. I'm I, gonna... It sounded large. <laughs> I'm gonna slow roll it. If you're gonna throw a spinnerbait, you might as well throw a big one, right? That's right. All right. Dropping shots with this little dinky thing here. Just because it's all about something new today. If this works, I will be shocked. And I'll also be a drop shot guy from now on. All right. Y'all were the first to see it. Captain Lee's fishing a drop shot. Captain Lou is probably rolling over right now laughing. Because <laughs> I make fun of his sissy gear all the time. Yes, I'm fishing a silly drop shot. I'm gonna catch a fish on this thing today. Can I, try, can I try that vibe worm? Whatever you want, it's, it's up to you. Everything is at your disposal. I'll try to drag this around. That's what I would be fishing if I wasn't so stubborn and want to fish, catch a fish on the drop shot. <laughs> Might put a Cinco on my drop shot. Oh, I, I can kill two birds with one stone if I catch a fish. Well, it's 1247. We have tried the north end of the lake where I caught the little guy. Had a couple other bites. We've tried offshore on a brush pile where I got a couple bites. And then we went into a creek mouth, which we didn't know, but was running water. And Travis saw him schooling. We couldn't get to him in time before they went down. We messed around with him for a while. And then we found a windy point. It was deep. Should have had fish on it. It's got shell on it. And now we're back offshore. So, and we, there's actually fish under the boat. And yes, I am holding a spinning rod, throwing a drop shot. Y'all take a picture, because it, it's not gonna happen that often. <laughs> but we're gonna keep plugging away at it. Travis's wife and kids are at Legoland having a good time. And they've texted saying they're doing fine and they're not in a rush to leave. So we may stay past two o'clock, so stick around. 
Stick it on a crankbait. Yeah. I, fi I figured they probably don't see a deep diving crankbait up here very often, so why not? Why not? Yeah, at that point, you're looking like a, a crawfish or something yeah. digging in the mud. Oh, all right, I'm going back with a chatterbait for a minute. All right, so 119, the offshore didn't work at all. Looked like it would, but it didn't. We're now gonna try some residential canals here on the east side and see if we can't dig up a bite. I think the wind's dying just a little bit, either that or we're in a really good wind shadow. Getting cloudier, it's getting a little darker. Hopefully the bite turns on soon before the weather gets here, we can catch some fish, so stick around. There's something big back up in there. What's that? So I heard something big in there again. I don't know if we can get in there. Yeah, I don't think so. It's probably, it looks like a real, really shallow flat. Well, I made the kingfisher angry. Is that what it is? He didn't like, he didn't, he didn't like my yeah. toad. There is a spot in this canal where these fish are stacked up. We just gotta find it. I haven't seen a lot of boats on the water today. No, just that one at, at the ramp and... The pontoon boat, a couple boat. pontoon boats. Ooh. Okay. Yep, good on one too. Toad. Good one. On oh, frog. that is a good one. On a froggy. On Mr. Kermit, coming to the boat. There's a good one. A long one. He's a little skinny, but he's long. On the toad. There's one. Yep, first one. Might have figured something out. He tried to get it. I had one come up on it, swirl on it. He just didn't get the, didn't get the frog. So it's two o'clock and as originally forecasted, the rain is starting, which means that we're probably gonna have to pull the cameras down if it gets any heavier, but two fish in the boat. The bite's starting to pick up. They're getting active. We're getting some rain. The wind's died down a little bit. We're probably gonna catch some big fish here in a little bit after I put the cameras away. But if that happens, I'll throw some pictures up now. But anyway, this was uh, Walk in the Water. Had a good time. Senior Chief Travis, thank you for your service. My Indian pleasure. Coast Guard. And uh, keeping our borders safe and our idiots back home when they run, uh, they do stupid things running boats too far offshore. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.